Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday Morning Mastermind. I'm your host, uh, Samantha studebaker Carl, and I'm here with my good friends Karen and Angel and Jason and Catherine. And today we're going to be considering or continuing our discussion of the book Love Life God by Jared Hewitt. And we are in the middle of chapter 10. Um, but before we get going with that, I want to give my friends an, an opportunity to introduce themselves. And then for you, for those of you who are watching, you can uh, comment on the live stream there and let us know that you're hanging out with us. Or if you're on YouTube, you can uh, like the video, subscribe to us, or you can join us in our Facebook group so you can participate too. You can find us by going to MindsetMasteryCollective.com and you'll find a link to get into our Facebook group there. All right, guys, go ahead and jump out. Introduce yourselves. I'm Angel Studebaker down here in South Carolina. Hello, I'm Catherine Clement. In Arizona. Yeah, and hey, uh, Jason Roberts here in uh, St. Pete, Tampa Bay, Florida. Awesome. Good to have you all on this morning. Um, so today we're we're in the middle of chapter 10 of Love Life God, and uh, we're going to be starting on uh, page 150. If you have the book, you can follow along with us. And Catherine and Karen are going to take turns reading the, um, the different parts of the, uh, of the chapter. And at any point, if anybody has a thought, just unmute yourself and uh, jump out and share your thought with us and we can stop the reading and go from there. All right, go ahead. Okay. You've mentioned the word drama a few times in this chapter. You also mentioned something about true feelings or emotions. Can we talk about that? I have to flip back and forth between Zoom and the book, so it's not going to be smooth. Absolutely. One of the ways you remain in places you consciously don't think you want to remain is by holding on to the drama. For example, one might say, I can't believe my partner cheated on me, making it all about the other person and creating within you a sense of victimization or I can't believe, fill in the blank. By really looking at creation and the energy and beliefs that create everything, you have to let blame go. You begin to see how everything comes into being and that everything comes into being for a reason. And that reason is that you created it. Every experience you have ever had came about because it matched the vibrations you were offering. You can see that even in the case of the above mentioned breakup, Everything came together based on your vibration. I can see that, but how does that play into real emotions or feelings? I have a comment on that, if, if you guys don't mind. Okay. Um, and this actually is um, kind of an example. This happened yesterday with, with my husband and myself. <clears throat> I was pretty stressed out this weekend. I've been very stressed out because of a lot of things that are going on. And, and um, we've got this, you know, I'm trying to, to redo my dad's house and, and work with a, a bunch of people and trying to organize stuff and, and keep the business running and just a lot of things that are going on. And um, I was expecting, I had these expectations of my husband to just pick up and do stuff that I needed for him to get done, but I didn't specifically tell him that I need these things to get done. And so when he didn't do them, because I had created this expectation, it made me angry. So we're talking about emotions that, that come up while well, I had this angry emotion towards him, even though he had no idea that I had these expectations from him. So I was the one that was creating my own reason for being angry and creating an angry feeling inside of myself. And you know, when I realized that I was, even though I had, it, it all comes up, it's stuff that happens, you know, in the midst of relationships, we do this to ourselves. And I made myself angry. And then of course, then when I was angry at him, he got angry at me. And so then we had all of this anger between us. And um, 
But when I realized what I'd done, I was like, all right, I'm doing this to myself and I need to stop it. And, you know, and I told him that I was sorry for doing, you know, making all this anger between us. And, um, you know, and we were able to work through it, but that is just kind of an example of what can happen in relationships when you create expectations without telling somebody that there's something you need or want from them. So that's just an example. <laughs> Since we are a, a discussion group, <laughs> and I was forgetting that, just you know, just trying to remember all my little pieces here, muting and unmuting and so forth. Um, I I was taken back to a, a, a I, I think it was a, it must have been a TV program. maybe in Europe, um, I, I, I guess I don't really know where it was, where it took place. And it was very unusual. It was a, a very unusual kind of thing for me to watch or pay any attention to uh, because it was a family um, of, a, of an entirely different culture uh, of of people than I've really experienced or had any reason to th that I thought I had any reason to relate to, but they, you know, they were really. I, I mean, it was almost like they could have been discussing this book because. Um, at least the main character was learning um, you know learning how emotions um, you know played played such a big part in his life and the life of not really his own children I, I think they were his brothers and sisters uh, in, in part because uh, they'd, they'd had a car accident when he was young and, and his mother had died and, and put him in charge. And, um, you know, I find as we read these books and we get these, these uh, kind of guidances, um, it's, it's interesting to try and apply them like uh, trying to apply to your life, Samantha. You know, I, I, I've been acquainted with you now enough years that uh, you talk about this kind of thing and I can, uh, I, I can find it so real, uh, you know, and I think, I, I, I think it's really amazing the things that we learn and just uh, you know, just kind of going over this kind of stuff. I'm sorry I'm so slow this morning. I'll try and pick up the pace here. Yeah, I had a thought <clears throat> also as um, last week we were talking about earlier parts in this chapter where um, or I think it was earlier in the chapter. Did, uh, let me go back just a little bit. It was about feeling into a feeling. Did we talk about feeling into the feeling or is that further ahead? Oh, wait, never mind. I think that's further ahead. I'll talk about that when we get to that part. <laughs> She's busy. You guys want to go ahead and read forward? Feeling into a feeling. Sounded interesting. Everybody, I'm out here in the woods. Sorry. 
it lost. So I'm back. Do you mind repeating yourself, Jason? I've heard some sounds, but I haven't been able to tell what you've been saying. Hold on. Keep going. I can't. Uh... Let's see here. I'll repeat the question here. I can see that. Uh, referring back to everything coming together based on your vi vibration. I can see that, but how does that play into real emotion or feelings? Well, as we said earlier, your thoughts form the waves that guide your consciousness into the potentiality of your creation. The waves then form the frequencies, which form the vibrations, which form the frequencies, etc., which creates or brings in the outer experience. Your thoughts come from source. Your feelings come from the waves that are formed from those thoughts. If judgment is present, and it has been, there is emotional discord in the vibration. This discord has confusingly been mistaken for thought. In other words, your ego has said, this is what I think, and you have taken it for fact that the ego or the I is in fact you. Isn't it? In part, but what we are now asking is for you to move into the part of you that no longer separates from source. In other words, to get back to who you really are, you have to go beyond the thoughts and examine the thinker. Who is thinking these thoughts and why? The simple answer here is the ego. You have given your power away to thoughts that were created initially from a judgment and these thoughts have become your standard point of creation, just as the ego or thinker has become the definition of who you think you are. This type of pattern can keep your creation in a loop because you are trying to solve a problem at the same level or with the same mind that created it. So it's like the idea of creation versus recreation again. If I define myself as my ego or the separate part of me that doesn't know what is source, I will continue to recreate based on the beliefs and energies that form that ego in the first place. Yes. And what we're bringing up now is more about a false sense of self. Using the phrase, I think, therefore I am, you can see the fallacy. You think you are the thinker and that the thinker is what gives you an identity and existence. In reality, you are source, hence you are able to offer thought. If you offer a thought in regard to what you are, that thought, whether characterized by you as good or bad, becomes a judgment. That judgment then elicits a feeling. So there has been discord between the true self and what the thoughts perceive of as the self or the ego. So the me doing the thinking is source? Yes, but in your individualized state. We'll use the metaphor of channels. Judgment can cause the closing or circumventing of certain thought channels. It can cause feelings to not truly be developed or discovered. Most people think into a feeling or feel into a thought. In other words, if you have a feeling and you put words and emotions to it, or you have a thought, but you get a feeling about it, you give it power with your emotions. What we would ask that all consciousness do is to feel into the feeling and discover it, it, if it is truly a feeling or a thought. If you wish to experience source as pure love, get rid of all your thoughts about pure love and feel into it. Go as far as you can go and then look to see what thoughts are present. Remove the thoughts and feel some more. Eventually, you will feel good, and the only thought that will come is, I feel good. The thoughts and feelings will align in love, and oh, what a powerful creator you are when that happens. It is the nature of man to be happy. 
It might not seem that way, but that is because you have allowed a judgment to bypass a true feeling. And I'll step in here for take a break on the reading for a minute because this really reminds me of Muji, who you guys know I've talked about for some time because this is what he and many, many, many other quote gurus uh, teach is to be the observer, to, um, to look introspectively as to who is thinking what, and you know, who is that observing that? Because if you keep going, if you keep asking that question and you keep delving into it deeper, you that, that's that's where we get these conversations about well you know from from the human perspective it's this but if you look at it from you know the higher perspective the source perspective it's it's completely different like it from the human perspective you know we look at people suffering or starving or being abused or being shot you know these mass shootings and and religion things and political things and we think oh my god this place is a mess you know but when you look at it from a source viewpoint and take all the emotion out of it and all of the judgment out of it so if if the judgment piece is huge i mean if you if you stop putting judgments on all those things as being bad from from God's point of view or source's point of view, um, looking, I'll say down, even though I don't think it's an up and down situation, but just, you know, but you're looking down and you're, and you're going, oh yeah, look at all these amazing shifts and perception that are happening because of this event or this particular person or, or this incident. And look at how much that person grew in compassion after such and such happened to them or whatnot so and and that removes all the suffering that but I have to say because I've experienced it so many times like you you can't it's good to be able to look at it from source point of view and to recognize that we are source but being here in a human body on this plane of existence I also think it, it's somewhat dangerous to stay in that source position all the time, unless you're a guru and you just have people coming to you, you know, but as far as like navigating a daily life, you can become extremely, or at least I did, I, I can become extremely um, disassociated with everything by staying in at that source viewpoint all the time. Well, I, what I have to say doesn't follow exactly what you just said, but it, but it has to do with the conversation I had with a man at the, uh, the breakfast table yesterday, which kind of helped me to see this in a, uh, you know, in a, in a simple way. He, I think, I don't know if anybody else does this, but sometimes I come in on a conversation um, and realize I haven't been paying attention the whole time. And uh, what I came in on, he was, he was talking about the crescent moon and uh, kind of, you know, sitting on the end, the tip of the crescent moon and looking down. And um, the question was, what are all those people, meaning what, what are all those people on planet Earth doing or learning? And it was, they're learning how to love. And I thought, that helps me to see things from an observer point of view, from, you know, from more distant looking at things. And uh, so I, I enjoyed that.
Yeah, it it seems to me that um, you know removing ourselves from a um, you know getting back to source is or or looking at things from source seems to be removing ourselves from uh, like the uh, any uh, emotional investment in in that which we're look that we're uh, experiencing or or contemplating um it reminds me of uh of spock on uh on star trek you know with uh, no emotions uh and he would always say how you, know, you get some drama something that happened some you know something that you know would make us stir up emotion in us and he would just say you know say it was fascinating fascinating interesting you know not no, no sign, not good, bad, or no judgment. And um, uh, I do, I see what you're saying, Catherine, you know, if you were to just remain in that state for a while, then perhaps we are, would be disconnected from, uh, you know, kind of humanity in a way, you know, and are disconnected from our own emotions and stuff. But uh, um, I was uh, kind of was... from like your individualized self that you're supposed to be from source. Sorry, I just it, that thought popped in my head, but it's kind of it would be kind of like disassociating from your individualized self and going completely back to source while you're still in the human plane or in the human form or the body or whatever you want to want to call it. So it's kind of like you just went back to, or you're just being source without being the individualized without the whole reason you're here you know kind of yeah and that makes me think uh if that's if that part of us is our ego then do we would if by doing that would we somehow bruise our ego and we'd get upset with ourselves for not uh for ignoring our our own emotions <laughs> i mean i don't know if it's <clears throat> so much that we're <laughs> that we get upset with ourselves, but I'll tell you other people are gonna get upset with you really quick when you seem to have a complete lack of empathy for what they're going through when it's not that, it, but it's it can come across that way. Um, because when you, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to get rid of ego or or to look at things from a source point of view or to help others, um, you know, get through their suffering by looking through that point of view. But when you are deep in suffering, the last thing you wanna hear is, oh, well, you know, you, you chose that before you came in. And so, you know, you'll be fine and that's, that's it, you know? And I, I mean, that may be the truth of it, but, that does not help someone who's suffering. And I don't know that ignoring suffering is necessarily our, uh, what we're supposed to be doing either. <laughs> if you get my drift, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to go back to the, the very beginning of what you're saying, what they were saying in the book in that um, like, we're creating these uh, vibrations, um, creating these, th having these thoughts that are creating these vibrations. And it's sort of like it feeds back into itself um, or, um, but that, um, let's see, what was mentioned was that we were creating the situation um, by our thoughts and our actions and vibrations or what have you. But sometimes it seems to me that, you know, you can have the best of intentions and have the right vibrations and and then you you know like uh, you you expect everybody to be on the same page as you you know hey this you know this vehicle is headed down is supposed to be headed down this street and the next thing you know someone that you have uh given the the driver's wheel to for the moment has taken it off in a different direction um without uh consulting you so aren't they just as much at fault for not communicating it to you that 
of their expectations as you communicating your expectations? I mean, don't they hold some responsibility for, for um, taking, you know, for, for doing just that? Or do, are we supposed to like eat all those feelings and take all the responsibility and then just be like, well, um, you know, fascinating. That's fascinating, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, and then never, and then just all go through life with this, uh, with actually the actual expectation that, that you can't expect anything to work out the way you want it to. I mean, uh, at some point, you've got to expect the people that you're uh, working with or that you've included in your in your um, in what you're doing to to fulfill their obligations or even, you know, communicate exactly what we were talking about, don't you think? Well, yeah. I think you on a level, Jason. Um, that I don't know how it is for anybody else, but I must have different levels of mind that are that are doing things that are affecting what I'm trying to uh, experience. I was talking with my brother yesterday, and I explained to him that when they come and leave my meds for me, they need to bring in something that will tell me what my pulse is so I know whether or not to take this particular medication for, for, for blood pressure at that time or not. And um, <clears throat> night before last or three nights before last or whatever, uh, they had to use a, a blood pressure cuff and everything was so ridiculous. The numbers were so ridiculously high. And the med tech said, are you concerned about something? And I said, well, I, you know, I, I don't know what that would be unless it is that I just read this thing about the volcano in Southern um, Africa where the lava was, running at 60 miles per hour. And I realized that I wouldn't be able to outrun that. And, you know, ha had concern about all these other people who wouldn't be able to um, outrun that. And, and I, I realized that ordinarily, I wouldn't think that that would affect me, but that's the only thing I could have thought of that, that would have affected me at the time. And it made me think about one of the people here who has had a stroke and showed me one day by, you know, going from front to back, how he'd lost a foot of brain. They said he'd, he'd lost a foot of brain in, in that stroke. And I pictured that as, um, you know, an area where for myself, I might have feelings, I might have emotions, I might have thoughts, I might have, have whatever at a different level than was, would be at, at my cortex. And uh, because, you know, when you have an expectation, if you think back, you try and understand uh, how you created something, um, you know, you think, I, 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 I didn't mean to create that. I didn't, you know, I, I was really trying to, you know, keep along the line of thought and so forth that would not, uh, not, not cause that. I don't know if I'm making sense, but, um, but, I, you know, I have a hard time figuring out <laughs> how I bring certain things on myself. I don't know if you do. Yeah, well, that that actually, um, you know, it makes it makes sense. Um, and that's kind of kind of my point is, uh, you know, by we most of us understand, you know, accepting responsibility gives us the power to change things and, you know, realize, you know, taking this view that other people um, that will um, that whatever's happening in our life is we've somehow created it. OK. 
then if you have this idea, well, that, um, you know, it's, it's our fault, it's, it's going to be our fault or our, you know, you're not trying to judge yourself, but whatever it is that your, your uh, vibrations you're putting out there is what's causing it. And, and that, um, you know, no, uh, you could even have this plan and do everything, you know, all, you know, all the plans of mice and men and all that kind of thing that where, you know, it's not going to, you kind of, you get this idea that it's not going to work out the way you expect. So then that starts to drive your, your thinking. Okay. So now you've got your, this, this, the, the phenomenon of, uh, not only that, you know, that, but then the ph phenomenon of, um, you know, attracting exactly what you don't want. By thinking about what you don't want, you actually end up attracting it. And then you're like, well, I wanted this, but I'm getting that and I must be putting out the wrong vibration. So now you're back to, you know, kind of square one, um, you know, with, hey, this is, <laughs> this is me doing the, doing the wrong thing. Now, I, I've, all, I've kind of, over the years come to the conclusion that the best way to keep something from happening is to not think about it, but to focus on only what it is that you want to happen. Um, don't think about the things that you don't want to happen and how you're going to try to avoid them. Because that's like, you know, when, uh, you know, the person that's just learning how to ride the bike and there's nothing in the, in, down the street to run into except the, the one um, stop sign and they can't do anything to avoid it. <laughs> because that's the one thing they're trying to not, you know, run into. And it just somehow, um, you know, um, your brain just, that's kind of the way your brain ends up working. So I, I wanted to jump out, I don't mean to interrupt, um, but I have, I have yeah, a pretty sure. good example um, kind of of this. Um, and I know we've kind of already, we've discussed it before, um, but it was like when, when I started like earlier this spring, I started all my baby plants, all my seeds, and whatnot, and um, I started, but I was so concerned about how they were doing, whether they were getting enough water and whatnot. I wasn't really looking at my outcome of what they could possibly be. I was more so concerned of, you know, what could happen? How can I prevent this? How can I prevent this? How do I keep this from happening? And so I'm just doing all of these things to keep things from happening and the things were still happening. And I'm like, why is this happening? Like I was getting fungus gnats, like my first batch of seeds, almost all of them grew like a, like a fungus mold or like that some, the soil mold over the top of it because it was too moist. And I'm like, what is going on? So but like my third time, I'm like, all right, we're going to leave them alone. We're going to plant them and then not think about it. That's it. We're just going to leave them. They're good. They're okay. You know, we'll check on them, you know, look at them. And so far, everything's doing good. I'm on my third batch of trying to grow something, but everything's going good because I've stopped thinking, I've stopped concerning myself with what could go wrong and how to prevent it. Now I'm just thinking, oh, they're going to be so beautiful. And every day I go in and I tell them, you're so big, you're doing so good. You know, and I don't think about, oh, you don't have any gnats or you don't have this or you don't have this. I'm just more concerned about how, you know, you're getting so big now. So kind of those examples, like an example of how you could bring an outcome that you don't want without really realizing you're thinking about it constantly. Because I thought, I'm like, I'm doing preventive stuff. I'm trying to prevent this. I'm doing my best to prevent it. I don't know why it's still happening. It's because I was still thinking the possibility is still there that it could happen. So I figured, I figured that was like, a yeah, nice exactly. Point. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of to my point. Exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, source, uh, you know, I, I believe we are like, uh, you know, we, we create these vibrations. We're able, we're, that kind of is what sets us apart from just about everything is we can create that spark of, of thought, that spark of emotion, that spark of, of, of vibration, and send it out into the universe. And we're also able to be like a tuning fork in that we can tune into other people's vibrations. And I think as we are, uh, you know, I think to, to the point of this book right now, what we're, I think, talking about is turning all of that off. And 
Um, and that's okay. I'm not judging that. I'm just, you know, maybe that's the, maybe that's where you were saying point of man is to be happy or was that what it was said? Nature of man is to be happy. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's an emotion. Maybe that emotion of true happiness is not having, is not having any judgment or emotion or, or um, creating any vibration or, or a, um, um, tuning into any vibration. Maybe it's just in being. Um, though I, I don't, I don't know that that would actually make me, make me happy. So I don't, I don't know. What are your, what are your thoughts on that, guys? <laughs> Well, I heard something on one of the things I was listening to this week about, you know, everybody always wants to know, why are we here? <clears throat> and, um, and they said, we're here to, we're, we're in training to be gods. So it's like, we're each a little piece of God. We're each a little expression of God, but we're in training to be a God and uh, or gods however you want to look at it and you know it's real similar to for a long time there was a lot of uh, what was it wwjd what would jesus do it, it's sort of the same thing and but it it did give me there were a couple situations that came up that i was uh, clearly getting agitated over something and I immediately just stopped and said, well, now, wait a minute, what, how would God, how would a God look at that? If I, you know, if I truly were playing my part as a God, how would I look at that differently? And man, it completely, I don't know if it was just asking the question or just, you know, going there for a second or what, but it completely took me out of that agitation that I was having um, because it was completely, it, it was that agitation, of course, was a judge based off of a judgment that I was making and a God in my belief, gods don't judge. So just taking that, that God perspective and that judgment out of it um, took the angst away immediately. I just wanted to pop out real fast. Like that makes a lot of sense. Like we're training to be gods. Cause if, it, if we go back to, you know, your soul's plan and we talk about, you know, like the past life regressions and stuff like that and the, 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 the different levels or the different ages of the souls, that, that makes so much sense. You know, cause we're down here, we're, we're here to learn about the humanity and, and the emotions and stuff like that and how pretty much how humanity runs and the more that we progress through the humanity and the more we progress as a soul we become you know eventually part of the soul council and then beyond like that makes so much more sense sorry my mind was a little blown there it just everything was just clicking together that i mean it does that makes a lot of sense <laughs> You know, it is a little freeing to look at uh, a situation that you are emotionally invested in and try to uh, think about the reasons why you can, why you can let it go, why, why it's perfectly okay that you don't hold judgment and that in that particular case, you don't um, you know, you don't stand up for the ethical values or the moral values of what someone else is doing, of what some, what something is happening, you know, where you can be like, you know what, just this time, I'm going to give it to the higher power and, and just be like, this is because, uh, you know, for the, yeah, because this is consuming me, you know, just because, you know, because I feel so strongly about it and I, and I, and I know in my deepest, you know, part of my being that this is not right or, you know, 
shouldn't be this way um, doesn't necessarily make it so. Um, and doesn't, I mean, it, it may be the truth, but there may be a uh, more mysterious um, uh, purpose of that whole thing. And, and also, you know, whatever's driving that, whatever thoughts and vibrations and wherever they're coming from, whoever they're coming from, um, you know, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother kind of track of, of consciousness and that, you know, m maybe you were not supposed to be a part of, but it has, we are aware of it at the, at that point. And so we're sort of tapping into it and, and we can't let go because we're, we, we, we're allowing ourselves to become emotionally uh, invested in it when, when possibly that's not what, you know, we should be doing, especially if it's, if it's going to pull us off course and, uh, and, and cause us distress, uh, you know, cause us elevated heart rates and, and whatnot that isn't, you know, that isn't good for us and what we're trying to do. Um, you know, so it, <laughs> just a, just a good thought, you know, I mean, instead of, you know, looking at it from the, Hey, we're, you know, looking at it from what would God, God do, but just realizing that, you know, sometimes even though we do, we're like, well, that's not what I would do. That's, you know, we do have that emotional investment and we, we can think and, and have an actual thought process that says, you know, Hey, that's not what I would do. I disagree with that, but I'm going to leave it to the uh, higher power, so to speak, and and focus back on what I want in my life and not on the things that are happening that I don't want in my life because that might attract more of what I don't want. I think that's a good point, Jason. And, you know, I mean, we are human. And even if we are some aspect of God or we are gods and we're just down here having this human experience we're still human in this experience and as humans we are super emotional and we are super invested in everything that is going on in our own personal life and existence and so it can be really difficult to try and separate ourselves from that and and act like we're just gods because it, it's both we're we're both and I think that when we we kind of bring ourselves back around to like what you just said there at the end what is it I want out of life as this experience at this point in time right now and if we say you know I want to be happy but yet all I can do is, uh, is that emotionally I'm so focused on what I disagree with then I'm causing myself unhappiness by staying focused on that thing that I disagree with whereas if I really want to be happy I have to let go of that judgment and be like, okay, that's, that's not part. I don't have to play. I don't have to play in that judgment area. I can, I can let go of it and I can, I can be happy in this moment because I think like when it was talking about um, feeling into the feelings, you know, for instance, when I was angry at my husband, I was caught up in the emotions. I was caught up in this judgment of, you know, judging him for not, doing what I was expecting him to do, even though I had not communicated to him what I wanted. I just had this expectation and then I was judging him for not doing it and that was making me mad. So I was creating my own anger and creating this vibrational thing between us that was causing frustration and anger. And so I was not happy in that moment, obviously. And, but yet when I started recognizing, okay, I'm doing this to myself because I'm focused on this thing that I don't agree with rather than recognizing how it was creating this emotional turmoil within myself. And once I took responsibility for the fact that I was creating this emotional turmoil, it didn't necessarily dissipate quickly because I was still caught up in the emotions, but I recognized it, took responsibility for it, and then I can get out of that. And that helped for him to not be as angry as well. So it, it's kind of a, 
we we have to accept i mean we are human and that's part of our existence and that's that's okay you know we can't just be like spock and just turn it all off that doesn't it, it's not going to work we're not <laughs> we're not vulcans but you know i mean uh, and when we aren't just gods, we're gods at having a human experience, if you want to look at it that way, which that's kind of how I feel. And, um, and so we can have, we can take ourselves out of our emotional state and go back to our, our peaceful spiritual state. But we also can experience these emotions. And a lot of times we'll do stuff to ourselves without even thinking. We just get caught up in our emotions and we get stuck in them. And unless we recognize that we're doing it to ourselves, we aren't going to have any, any improvement in the situation. We're just going to keep rolling around in that emotional turmoil. So I think the key is to just be like, okay, what is it I actually want? Do I want to be happy or do I want to be in drama? And if I want to be in the drama, then I can keep going over all these judgments and I can judge everybody. and I can be mad at everybody and I can keep expecting things from people that they're not capable of and and I can keep on doing that and I will be angry and upset all the time. Or I can let go of these judgments that I'm creating. I can let go of these expectations that I'm having without even telling somebody, you know, and, and then, um, you know, I mean, you can, you can choose, you get to choose. So if you want to stay in the drama, you can, if you want to pull out of it, you can do that too. You just have to recognize that you're capable of doing something and that, taking responsibility for the emotions that you're creating within your own head. Right, well said. And I'll just add, I know we're at the top of the hour. So um, just as a final thought, I'll add that, you know, what if we are gods in training? Um, I'm not saying we are or we aren't. I'm just saying, what if? And um, it, we, we need to realize how, like most of the time we feel very, I think a lot of most people feel very uh, not powerful, you know, like not God qualified, so to speak. I know I certainly feel that way. And, uh, but, I was reminded, and, and, and I, I bring this up because I want, to, what I'm emphasizing here is the importance of asking the question. Because when I was upset and I was asking the question uh, and I was saying to myself, okay, Catherine, you're, you're a God in training. What, you know, why, why is what's happening? Not a good idea. You know, like what's going on? Where's this thought coming from? Where's this feeling? When you ask those questions, you'll get answers. And I did get answers. And, and whether, whether those answers, you know, you can further evaluate depending on what answers you get, you might have to dig a little deeper because it could just be your ego coming back at you, or it could be a guide, you know, um, Obviously, as Jared wrote this book, he felt like he was communicating not with his ego, but with guides, um, with source, with the universe. And so when I was asking those questions, when, well, actually, I just told myself, uh, Catherine, you can't have those thoughts if you're a god. And, um, and then I was asking about, you know, well, so how do you get around that, you know, and, and, and I, and I said, you know, but I'm not a God, like I'm not anywhere near a God, and I'm not qualified to be a God, and I don't want to be a God, and, and that's just where I'm at right now, you know, it, it seems like way too much damn responsibility for me, and I'm not equipped, and, uh, and then in a very calm and still unemotional voice. And that's kind of how I judge who's talking to me, because if it's my ego, it usually has emotion involved. But if it's like a guide, it's usually very small and still and unemotional and just matter of fact. And, um, and, I, and, they, and I say they, because I think it's plural. They reminded me, um, Catherine, have you ever manifested anything? And I was like, 
well, yeah, <laughs> lots of stuff. And they were like, have you instantly manifested something? And I was like, yeah, actually I have instantly manifested things. And they said, you're a God. And I'm just like, well, fuck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, sorry, guys. So, um, you know, God's cuss too, I guess. But anyway, just something to think about. Ask the questions and listen for the answers, you guys. And just like that, we go from a good, wholesome, family-oriented discussion group. <laughs> Rated our, uh, no, just Read kidding. That one word. <laughs> I love you. That's that's uh, well, that's really insightful. That's very insightful, and uh, I, I think um, I just uh, I appreciate being able to be on here and discussing these things because each time I do, it sort of recalibrates, um, you know, re recalibrates my uh, my mind and and reminds me of uh, needing to be aware of those uh, vibrations, uh, those thoughts, uh, and, um, and, and how, and really well, how, how much I've grown since I've learned to um, distinguish uh, the, the emotions and the thought, the, the emotional thoughts from the the uh, non-judgmental thoughts and you know kind of what's coming from source and what's kind of bouncing back from um, uh, just as a situational situational response from um, my surroundings uh, you know that takes a little bit of work I, I think for anyone that's out there that's catching this on replay um, you know uh, pick up that book about um, what was it? Uh, your uh, your thoughts or things, or or what to say when you're when you talk to yourself, and kind of dig deep into you know what it is that you're telling yourself. Um, not just to find that out, but also to start distinguishing between you know what's coming from uh, what thoughts are coming from vibrational uh, emotions that are maybe being influenced by your environment rather than uh, really what you're wanting uh, to bring into your or manifest into your own life. Um, once again, thank you so much for, for allowing me to be part of this group, everyone. I really appreciate you all and have a wonderful, wonderful um, reflective uh, Memorial Day weekend. And, uh, and congratulations, Samantha, on your new addition to your family. Very wonderful. Congratulations. I'd like to say ditto, 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 ditto. <laughs> awesome, guys. And thanks for the congratulations. Yeah, we have a new grandbaby, number five in the family. So we're, we're excited about that. <laughs> and um, it's not mine. <laughs> not yeah, not angels. It was the, it's my son's third one. So <clears throat> they're at the hospital right now. But um, anyway, guys, this has been a, a wonderful chat. And I'm sad that I missed a lot of it because of my computer problems and and whatnot, and, uh, but I'll listen in on the replay. So, and I'm sure that those of you who are out there who are maybe catching this as a replay, um, maybe you wanna participate. And if you do, just go to mindsetmasterycollective.com. That's our website where you can find a link to get into our Facebook group, or you can search for Mindset Mastery Collective on Facebook and find our Facebook group that way. But either way, we'd love to have you. We'd love to learn from you as well. And, um, you know, we generally get together each week on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. So if you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you. So with that, guys, have a great, awesome, amazing week. And we'll see you next time on the Saturday Morning Mastermind. Bye for now.